Big, is it any special challenge as coaches to prepare a quarterback is going to play in his hometown? No. Um, you know, Drew's just got to be able to handle that, you know, and he's going to have to do it once a year now for, so he's just got to do it. Draymond and Noah practice today? Uh, Draymond, no. Noah, no. And then is Leary still in the concussion? Yes. What is the outlook on Noah? I, I think his outlook is positive overall, but no guarantees. You said no and no to who, Coach? Draymond, no practice. Leary, no practice. Fant, no practice. Gotsis, no practice. Uh, Juwan James, no practice. And that's it. Everybody else is full or limited. With Juwan, is that just kind of a precaution? Or? Yeah, right now that's what it is. Is IR still a possibility for Draymond? Is that uh, I don't think. Not at, not at this moment. Not at this moment. In terms of playing time, what do you expect Juwan James to be able to do on Sunday? Uh, we'll see. We'll see how he comes out the next few days. Um, hopefully, you know, it's at least as much, if not more. But, you know, if his knees still bother him, then we'll have to adjust. How big of a challenge is the Chiefs defense for Drew with the pressures they brought last week? Yeah, they do a lot of different things, um, both from a pressure standpoint and coverage standpoint. He's going to have to make some tough, correct reads and figure out where to go with the ball quickly and be able to decipher the pressures versus the non-pressures and then the different coverages. Vic, any time there's a new quarterback for Broncos country, obviously there's surge and fan interest. Are, are you kind of sensing like the excitement around the team? Obviously winning helps you. You know, I haven't sensed it just because I'm not out there to sense it. You guys are my only, uh, con what's the word? Uh, conduit to the public. So I do sense it from you guys. Everything's better when the quarterback well, everything's better. Everything that's for every team, not just for this team. But go ahead. But I mean, do you get a sense that in every town? Is do you see that kind of attachment in every place you've been, or is it more so here? Everywhere, everywhere. Nick, as you went through OTAs, mini camps, <laughs> training camp, preseason games, did you ever get an indication watching Drew that you were going to get this from him and get it as early as you got it? Um. I think in looking at his college tape, you know, obviously we took him in the middle of the second round and made a little move to do it, you know, so we had some hope then. I think early on when he was here, all the way through until the time when he got hurt, you know, he was going through a major adjustment. And as um, weird as it seems, I do think the time off helped him. I do. You know, that was too much time. But I do think the timeout helped him. When he came back, started practicing, he was in a better spot emotionally and mentally. The, and, the play call thing that he does a lot, do you want less of that going forward? Well, he's got to do what he's got to do, hopefully. You mentioned just you know, different mentally and emotionally. What ways have you used his growth? I just think he had better command of the offense from a mental standpoint. And I think sitting back and watching, he got a better understanding of what it's like playing quarterback in the NFL. When the quarterback plays well, how much smarter is the head coach or how much smarter is the head coach perceived to be when the quarterback well, plays well? Well, there's no more important position in all of sports than the quarterback in football, not just, I'm saying all sports. So if he plays good, you always got a chance, you know? Um, you feel like you can win high scoring games or if tight games in the fourth quarter, you got a chance, you know, so it's important. There's obviously a lot of hype around him right now. Has he handled it as you want him to? Has he had the proper perspective? I think so. I think he has. When Emmanuel Sanders was traded, did you notice any sort of change in Portland just in how he handled the receivers? No, not really. <laughs> not really. Coach, the uh, honors meetings are going on right now, and 17 games is going to come up, and other CBA changes. Where do you come down on that? Well, I'll tell you a story. I mean, since since the league went to 32 teams, which was when the Texans came in in 2002, my ideal suggestion, which has never been put forth in front of anybody <laughs> important, but I don't think there should be divisions. I think you got 16 in each conference. Everybody should play each other once, and that's 15 games. Okay, and then if you want a 16th game, 
you play a natural rival from the other conference, you know, Jets and Giants play every year, Eagles, Steelers, you know, Texans, Cowboys, et cetera, et cetera, play every year. And then keep it at 16 games. But you'll avoid the problem that's going to happen this year where probably an 8-8 eight and eight team is hosting a 12-4 and four team. You're going to get the six best teams in each conference. And the divisions always float. There's some that are easy some years, some that are got a bunch of good teams. You know, that, that switches back and forth every couple years. I just think it'd be a good way to avoid it. But I, I'm not for 17 games. I think it should stay at 16. Did divisional play work better as far as the playoffs and everything when you had divisions of five, even six teams back in the 90s? Uh, there was never six. AFC Central had six. Are you positive of that? In a couple of years. Yeah. In a couple of years, okay. Well, it used to be when it was 28 teams, it was five, five, and four. Okay, and then the scheduling was weird because I was with the Saints then and we were one of the four teams. So to get your extra two games, it was a huge formula. Um, but what was the premise of your question again? Did it help? Was it better for getting the right teams? I don't know. I, I'm just, I just don't think divisions are going to get you the best six every year. You know, you want the best six, do it like they do in college. One through, you play everybody once. Why no on 17? The... I just think 16 is more than enough, you know. I mean, you can see some of these teams, us included to a degree, it, you know, the injuries start to pile up. You know, and if they want an extra week of TV, give everybody two buys during the season. What about the preseason? Do you want fewer, would you like fewer games? Than the you know, I'm only down to three at the, you still need, I mean, these young guys need them. You know, and everybody says, well, I'll trade out a preseason game for a regular season game. The veterans don't play in those games, you know, so it's, it's not equal. Would you like us to be the candidate for these ideas? Are you getting the hint? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like my idea? I think you're at once every, I hadn't heard that before. Play every team once. You know, back in the day, um, teams were reluctant to move divisions because everybody used to split the gate based upon where you played. And then at some point, all gates are split equally now. So that solved that problem. So let's solve the next problem and play everybody once. And let's get the top six teams in there. Who would be your natural rival in the NFC? Yeah, I guess it would be Arizona, right? Are they the closest geographically? Oh, you yes. wouldn't try to keep the Chiefs or Raiders? Is like we we play them once a year. But you wouldn't try to keep that as a second. I guess that's what you're saying. Do you have a daughter? They, they, no, it doesn't hurt the Michigan Ohio State rivalry. Alabama Auburn. They only play once a year. Do you ever go directly to Joe or John and mention these things? I've been saying it for since 2002, <laughs> but um, um, maybe I will. Now you got the big soapbox. I know. Yeah. Have a few more Maybe a little bit, but not a lot. You know, and he had that hand injury that was stinging him in the second half in the Patriot game. And he said he changed his play calling a little bit in that game, but not a lot, no. We talked to Andy Reid about an hour ago, and he said he's pulling for Drew Locke. He also said that if Drew Locke works out, that's good for the league. Where do you come down on these young quarterbacks you know, playing more and coming through as kind of a, the faces of the league? The hell with the league. It's good for the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think Locke Mahomes could be like the next great QB rivalry? I'm not ready to go there yet, but hopefully. Meg, when you mentioned Pat's hand, when Sunday rolls around, how much do you look at how he's throwing the ball, maybe pregame to see how he is, and then early in the game that it could be? Would you adjust how you play? If you're seeing Potentially, something? if you're seeing something significant. But I think that guy will play through whatever he has, and he'll figure out a way to make the throws they're asking him to make. Okay. Thank you, Coach. Thank All you right.